Some of my early childhood memories revolve around bowling television shows. I used to watch Bowling for Dollars on WOR. I used to watch the PBA Tour on ABC. I used to watch Candlepin Bowling on a local channel out of Boston, Massachusetts. So bowling's been in my life for a long time. So I used to watch on TV. I used to go every so often. I didn't get into bowling myself until 1986 when I joined a youth league for Candlepin Bowling. And if you don't know what candle pin bowling is, instead of the regular 10 pin bowling pins, they're thinner and you use a smaller ball that's a few pounds instead of like 9, 10, 11, 15, 16 pounds. And you get three balls to try and knock all the pins down. And the other difference is that any pins that stay down, if they're in front of the pins that are still standing, you can use those to help you out and get a spare. It's an interesting kind of game. It's more geared toward New Englanders, although it may be in other parts of the country. And I did that for pretty much all of high school. When I got into the early 1990s, however, after being an adult, I met someone while I was living just outside of Worcester, Mass. And uh, we started dating. And in order to get on her parents' good side, because they were both bowlers, I started to get into 10-pin bowling instead. I know it seems like a silly reason, but I actually had a lot of fun doing it. I learned how to throw a 10-pin ball. I learned how to curve or hook the ball from right to left, and I wound up buying my own equipment. Uh, in fact, I still do bowl a bit on the side. This is the bowling ball that I use now. This is a, uh, a Hammer Gauntlet Fury, which I bought when I got back into bowling uh, last year or two years ago. I forget which one it was. So bowling has been a part of my life for a long time. And with that, bowling video games have been something that have always interested me, going all the way back to the Atari 2600 and the original bowling for that system, which is fairly simple but still keeps decent score and is a lot of fun to play. In 1996 for the PlayStation, we got this. We got 10-pin alley for the PlayStation. This, while it's cartoony in nature if you look at the back, What's interesting about this game is that the ball physics and the pin physics were really strong, surprisingly good, where it felt like you were actually at the bowling alley. You get a lot of pin action depending on the angle or the hook of your ball into the pocket and depending on the weight of the ball and the, uh, the amount of rotation that you had on the ball. There were a bunch of factors that would go into it, but it felt good. It looked good. It responded the way that bowlers thought that it should. What was also interesting about 10 Pin Alley is that it was endorsed by the Pro Bowling Hall of Fame of all places. Uh, you actually see like the little logo for the Pro Bowling Hall of Fame right there. So it had some legitimacy to it. And the game was a sneaky good seller. So good in fact that two years later we wound up getting a sequel that was endorsed by Brunswick which makes bowling equipment. This is called Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling. This features Walter Ray Williams Jr. on the cover, who is a Hall of Fame bowler. It features Brunswick bowling equipment, the different kind of bowling balls for that particular time, different lane conditions in terms of oil, uh, different ball reactions, and so on. This is what the back of the case looks like. For me, as a bowler in 1998, this was amazing because it was basically like having a bowling television show on your PlayStation where you were using real life bowlers and real life equipment and I, I absolutely love this. I thought that there were some things missing. Uh, the presentation felt like it was lacking just a little bit because I wanted it to be more like the ABC telecasts that I had grown up watching. But it was good enough and the fact that it had some, uh, it had real brands and real bowlers in it added the authenticity that I had really been looking for in a bowling game. This also sold pretty well, so it should be no surprise that another sequel was greenlit by THQ, and that is the subject of this episode of Unsealed as we take a look at 2000's Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling 2, this guy right here. You can see that it does have the Circuit City sticker on there for $9.96, so this was on clearance. I did pay a bit more than that for this, but I wanted to have it brand new because I wanted to talk about bowling in an episode that wasn't about Wii Sports. Not that Wii Bowling is bad, because I absolutely love it, but this has, just like Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling, it has that authenticity to it. 
with real bowlers being used. Again, you see Walter Ray uh, prominently featured on the cover. Unfortunately, when this came in, like some of the, ste the seal was hanging off a little bit, so it's partially open, which will make my job easier when I open it shortly. But we see here, your search for the perfect game ends here. Of course, a perfect game in bowling is bowling 12 strikes in a row for a score of 300. It sounds easy, but believe me when I tell you it is not. You have to be able to throw the same kind of ball while making minor adjustments each time because the bowling alley conditions will change. The lane conditions will change. So being able to throw the same shot with minor adjustments 12 times in a row is not as easy as it sounds. You have to deliver the ball the same way, you have to use the same rate of speed, you have to have the same approach, um, and it is not easy to do the same thing, the exact same thing, again, with minor adjustments when necessary that many times in a row. Multiplayer bowling action for up to eight, so that's a plus. Nine modes of play, including brand new team play and skills challenge, so they're adding modes to this particular game. Updated Brunswick Pro staff, including females, so it's nice to have both guys and gals bowling together. Enhanced create a bowler mode and shockingly realistic bowling physics. And again, that is the catch with these games is that the pin action and the ball rotation, the way that the ball reacts when it hits the rack of pins is quite impressive. So again, we'll take a look at the back of the case just so you can see what the visuals look like. I mean, it's a PlayStation game, so it's not going to blow you away in terms of how it looks, especially in 2020. But the presentation is quite good. It feels like television style presentation without, of course, any commentary. Uh, and the ball physics and the pin physics, I think, really make this uh, really, really decent. So let's go ahead and finish taking the seal off of here so we can talk about this game a bit more. I was very happy to find this. Um, I've actually been uh, having this hankering to go bowling, but of course with things going on here in 2020, that's not happening for a little while. Uh, we do have the ID sticker for Brunswick Pro Bowling 2 at the top. They're going to wind up taking off, and then we'll see what's on the inside. Again, this is from 2000, so this is a 20-year-old game. There we go. When we open the case, Yikes. There we go. There's nothing really falling out, which is good. So we do have basically what looks like the front, like the, the front of the instruction manual. We also have an ad here for Ultimate 8 Ball on the back of the manual. We'll take a look at the manual here very shortly. As a matter of fact, if I can take it out, we'll take a look at it now. And of course, this is going to give me issues, right? All right, we'll do it like this. We'll just pull it out like that. There we go. All right. So the manual is not very thick. That doesn't surprise me. It would not surprise me at all if it's black and white, and it is, but that is okay. So it looks like there are a lot of play controls here, uh, but really this game is fairly easy to learn and understand after uh, a few games, a few uh, if you play and want to get used to the play controls. This, unlike... Uh, Ten Pin Alley that uses almost that bowling style meter that shows the the backswing in the front swing. Uh, this uses a different meter altogether, which I actually prefer, which is the line meter at the bottom, uh, which makes it easier to follow the cursor. So the introduction just says here the most realistic bowling simulation ever. Boy, really? Well, I I, it, I guess it might be. Uh, come to your home on the PlayStation game console. Compete in a friendly open play game. Practice your spares in the practice mode. Then hit the lanes to take on the best pros on the circuit in the career mode. From casual weekend fun to playing for big money in a high-stakes skins game, any way you play, Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling 2 adds up to a championship bowling experience. I believe that's Matt Barnes there. Uh, I was trying to think of his name, and I couldn't remember it. That I do believe that that's Matt Barnes. I haven't watched bowling in a long time. So if we take a look at some of the different types of play, we do have, uh, let's see, trying to find it here. So open play, and open play is just open bowling. You just kind of bowl game by game, sometimes even frame by frame. With a registry, you can create a player, so you can add a player, edit, 
delete that player. You can clear out all your edited players, whatever it is you want to do. Bowler type, again, you can adjust between male and female. You can change the body, face, hairstyle. Again, it's PlayStation, so don't be expecting a great amount of customization, but at least there's some. You can also play with the bowler's attributes as well, and you can choose different equipment, which makes a big difference. Again, if you're big into bowling and understand how the different kinds of equipment work. Some of the ball attributes based on the type of equipment you use, hook, which like I talked about is curve, either going from right to left or left to right, depending on which arm you're using. Length, which shows how far down the lane the ball will roll before it starts to curve in toward the pins. Back end shows how harshly the ball will turn as it reaches the uh, toward the end of the uh, lane. And then flare shows the amount of oil that the ball will displace or how much that it will kind of evaporate off of the lane as it rolls down the uh, as it rolls down the alley. There's an analog control option which I don't really recommend. I use the digital option. Uh, that's just me though. Uh, you may, if you buy the game, decide that you want to use uh, a different way to do it. But for me, just like with golf and using analog swing, I prefer the three button swing myself. It's just something that I've always been used to. Golf and horseshoes and bowling are the same kind of thing. You're gonna hit the button once to start your swing, once at the top of your backswing in order to kind of go back forward, and then once again to set your accuracy. And that's how Brunswick works, at least in terms of using a meter. I wanna see if they talk about the different game modes here. We, there's a tournament mode, which is nice. Team play, skills challenge, which is a, a spares challenge, which is always fun. The career mode, bowl the, bowl the entire pro circuit throughout the United States, then bowl around the world from Germany's Munich to Seoul, Korea, South Korea, that should say. Play as one of the Brunswick pro staff bowlers or create your own, then hurt the circuit trail. There's practice. There's cosmic bowl in here, which if you've ever been to a bowling alley on a weekend when they turn all the lights off, you have that option here, should you decide to do that. And I think that's about as far as it goes. There's not really a lot else to show. I think in this game, the career mode is going to be your best option in terms of depth, being able to go to different events and face off against different pros. Um, so that's worthwhile. But what is the best overall bowling game, at least in my opinion? Uh, well, I love this game and I was happy to find a brand new copy of this game and I'm certainly going to use it. As a matter of fact, my PS1 was over here off to my right. Uh, I still have to stick with Wii Bowling, if I'm being honest. It is not the deepest game. It doesn't have league play, uh, which would have made Wii Sports Bowling like the best thing ever. Uh, but the play controls are where it counts and the natural feel of uh, putting rotation or spin or hook on the ball it just hasn't been matched in any bowling game either before or since. Uh, it is that good. So if you have a Wii still, and hopefully you still do, uh, Wii Sports or Wii Sports Resort, either of those is definitely the way to go when you're talking about bowling games. But if you don't have a Wii and you have a, a PlayStation or a PS2 or a PS3, then you really can't go wrong with either of the Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling games, though I do prefer to just a little bit more because of the different kind of presentation, the ability to be a little bit more customizable and the more updated equipment. That's my opinion, but you can't go wrong with any of the three. Even if you found uh, 10 Pin Alley somewhere for cheap, go ahead and grab it. It's actually a lot of fun. Just don't get 10 Pin Alley 2 for the Wii because that's not so good. So that's a look at bowling. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode that was actually not scheduled, but because I got the game in, I wanted to go ahead and open it up because I wanted to play it. We'll be doing another one of these unsealed episodes really soon. Until the next time, my friends, take care of yourselves and each other during this very weird time, and we'll do it again real soon, I promise. See you then.